In Africa, the woman is not Adam's rib, but rather his shoulders and backbone. She is the driving force behind survival and represents 80% of the manpower working on the continent. On her back rests the weight of raising the children and keeping up traditions. At the epicenter of those carefully preserved traditions, we find marriage relations, the family. Even today, for the vast majority of African women in both the city and country, their greatest dream is to get a good husband and have many children. When I was 16 years old, um, my parents said to me, you get married. Rahel Girma is 23 years old, and until the age of 16, she lived in Harar, a small, primarily Muslim city in eastern Ethiopia. At that age, she was to have married an uncle of her father's who, according to the dictates of tradition, had arranged this marriage when she was still a little girl. Rachel never accepted the agreement, and when the time for her wedding approached, she fled to Addis Ababa, where she works in a bar in the city center. At present, she is going out with one of the waiters in the bar. Okay, this is my, my, my uncle. Before he, he, he come in the house, he bring me presents. One day, my parents are sleeping. I get up in the morning, I left my home, I take a taxi, I go to the radio, I take a rain, I'm, I'm coming at not this. After if I saw this, uh, the city is very big and beautiful, I think of myself, I'm, I'm free. After I have little money, I must go in a hotel. I find a job after I get uh, this restaurant, Milko's restaurant. We work each other, one, one, one guy. Uh, one day he asked me to invite to me. We go together, we make, um, we make a relationship. Now we live together, he helped me. I can tell you that she, the best thing that uh, ever happened in my life. What I like most about her is that her sense of independence. And she, she's so different from the rest. What we know, most Ethiopian women, you know, tend to be submissive towards their husbands. No, I'm not, no, I'm not this. Nobody knows me. I can't do whatever. I'm for, I think I'm free. Uh, I have uh, good memories in, in Harar, like a juggle, my friend does. I think I come back, uh, I go back in Harar. Uh, for me, Harar is uh, like a jail. I remember my, fam my parents, I go back in Harar. I prepare to live in Ad Addis. Addis is for me good. Ethiopia is a Christian island surrounded by Muslim countries. Harar is an island within an island, 
a Muslim city set in the center of Ethiopian Christianity. But above all, Harar is a city on which it is difficult to pin a label. It is the fourth holiest city of Islam, and within its walls it holds close to 100 mosques, the greatest concentration per square kilometer anywhere in the world. For centuries, Harar was a key point on the trade route between Ethiopia and the Somali coast. To safeguard its holiness and commercial supremacy, Harar was closed to the infidel until 1854, when Richard Burton managed to get inside the walls and spend 10 days in Harar as a guest of the Sultan. There was a curse according to which the city's power would decline from the time of the first Westerners' arrival. Whether by chance or not, from that moment it began the slow decline which has kept it somnambulant, as if drugged. Harar is a devout and ancient city where tradition rejects the pull of modernity. A city in which arranged marriages are still an entrenched tradition. I will never allow my daughter to return. If anything keeps the family and the community united, it is tradition. She has betrayed this and made a fool of her family. I supported her ever since she was a baby, paying her expenses all her life, and she ran off with the money I gave her. Ali works as a tailor on the streets of the city. This is an ancient and highly regarded profession in Harar, where it is the men who handle a task which in other cultures is the preserve of women. He is also a devout man, deeply Muslim. The custom of arranged marriage does not originate in the Quran, but in kinship needs even older than Islam itself, needs and customs which still exist in many corners of Africa. The most important thing is that the man should be good to the woman, not how the marriage is made. Of her two sisters, one has married of her own accord and the other in the traditional manner. Both of them are happy. I could say much about failed marriages, some were for love and others traditional. Rahel's mother works selling chat. Chat is a stimulant which is taken throughout the Horn of Africa. Some eat it to work better, and others to study. It is always present at social occasions and at weddings. Melako Tarese, Rahel's uncle, is also an offended groom. He didn't like the way Rahel ran off and isn't always willing to talk about the matter. For me, it was a surprise when Rahel left me. From the time she was little, I treated her as if she were my daughter. 
Her parents agreed to the marriage, and the dowry is not a small one. This marriage was in everyone's interest. She won't be able to find what I offered her anywhere, a house, money, a secure life. If you like, you can ask my wife. Milaku is a rich trader in the city of Harar. His father and grandfather were also traders. He belongs to one of the families that made Harar a strategic point along the caravan routes which joined the coast of Somalia with the highlands of Ethiopia. The same families which for centuries prevented any infidel who might endanger both pocketbook and spirit from entering the city. I have never hit her, as other men do. She goes out with her friends whenever she likes and wants for nothing. She has everything a woman could want. If it had been my choice, I would have let her choose a husband, but women can't decide in this matter. What Rahel did isn't right, but as a mother, I want her to come back. I hope she comes back. We miss her. She's a good friend who took part in everything we did. She was always making up stories and we had a lot of fun. <laughs> What most Harar women want is to marry a good man who will give them a good dowry. Love will come with time. This is less important. The important thing is to make a good marriage. I married for love. Rahel suffered a lot. I can't imagine marrying a man I didn't love. I would have done the same thing. I don't wish Rael ill, but I'm sure that she's not having a good time there in Addis Ababa. She had no right to do what she did. She had no right. Nobody knows how painful it is for your daughter to leave home so young. Her father doesn't forgive her, but I do. She'll always be my daughter. I don't know where she is, and I don't want to know. You know, my dream is to be <laughs> Japanese, to be hostess. For that, I'm learning this language. If I finish this language, after three, three months, I take a course. If I, maybe if, if I finish two years, I become the hostess. I want to see Europe and America. If I see the plane in the sky, I dream that. One woman, one problem. Two women, two problems. That's what some friends say. But I have two wives and no problems. Sia is my first wife. She's the mother of my two children. And Entata is my second wife, the younger one. We've only been married a year. And thank God they get along very well.
Konodaga is a small bozo fishing village in the area of Mopti, on the banks of the Niger River. The bozo are an anchor for the traditional world of the river, and polygamy is a common and deeply entrenched custom among the local population. In West Africa, 30% of men are polygamists. I told her, I think the housework is beginning to get too much for you by yourself and a second wife could help you. This seemed like a good idea to Sia. Furu began to get dressed up when he came home from work and spent more time away from home than before. I asked him about it, and he always told me he was at a friend's house. But in the village, people said that he was looking for a second wife. When he spoke to me directly, I told him, fine, that's okay. If it really is for the good of the family and for your happiness, it's fine. But you have to accept one condition. I don't want her to become your favorite and take my place. <laughs> I get along well with my older sister, with Furu's first wife. I agreed to become his second wife because that's what my parents wanted, but I asked him to treat me the same as Sia, without distinguishing between the two of us. Furu works building boats. This activity keeps almost all the men occupied during the entire morning and brings in the money that sustains the village. The wood is obtained from the eucalyptus, from the areas south of the Niger. There were several underlying reasons that led me to decide to take a second wife. There are times when the first wife gets sick, or for example, when she gave birth. You can't sleep with her for at least a year and a half in case she gets pregnant again. What do I do then? I'm not an adulterer, and I don't want to become one. The second reason is love, which for me is also very important. And yes, there's something of love in this decision. If a man of a certain age takes a second wife, the friends his own age will too. Men are like that. They feel inferior if they don't have the same thing as the man next to them. Singing accompanies all of the daily chores, including gathering the excrement that will be used for fuel. <laughs> Sia and Ntata work together on smoking the fish that Furu catches. They try to accumulate as much as possible, so that once a week they can go to market and sell it. At first I didn't know anything. My village is very close by and when Furu came to talk to my father, I'm sure that as soon as he saw me he decided that I would be his second wife. I was happy to be the second wife because very often this one is the man's favorite. My older sister is very good to me. I still don't have children, but I take care of Sia's as if they were my own.
Women are persuaded in private. The arrival of a second wife makes them demand more from the husband. I have to spend double the time I spend on keeping Entata happy one day to keep Sia happy the next day. They talk about everything. You can't fool them. My husband didn't get another wife because he was tired of me. On the contrary, since Entata arrived, my relationship with Furu has gotten better. I'm the older sister, and it's normal for me to be the husband's favorite. Furu treats Sia very well, because she's his first wife. But I'm younger, and I know that it's me he loves. If you ask them, I don't know what they'll say, but there's no favorite. I think they wouldn't like it very much to know that neither one of them is my favorite, since the number one woman in my life has always been my mother. Once a week, the five members of the family make a short journey by boat to the city of Mopti. There they sell the fish they have smoked. In Africa, polygamy is not practiced exclusively by Muslims. More than half the polygamous families are animists, or even converted Christians who practice polygamy in secret. In many corners of Africa, previously because of wars, and today due to emigration, there are double the number of women than men of marriageable age. Of these women, only a third have gone to school. It is normally women who have not received an education who continue to support polygamy. However, this is not true in the case of Mamo Traoré. I'm in favor of polygamy. I'm single for now, but if a man tells me he's going to take me for his second or third wife, I'll agree. Why refuse? The fact is that in our society, men marry two or three or even more women. The law prohibits it, but it's done. It's an opportunity for us, single women, to get a husband. Once in Mopti, Furu leaves his two wives alone. This is a market where only the women can display their wares. I'm against polygamy because when I love a man, I don't want to share him with anybody. Also, too many wives mean lots of expenses. If there are two wives, for example, and one has ten children and the other ten more, or I have five and the other four, that's a lot of expenses. Why not accept polygamy if you have a secure life and your marriage is guaranteed if you behave well? I'm against it because it creates a lot of problems within the family, discord, separation of the children, all that. Between the women there are also problems. It can even lead to aggression, including the death of one of the wives. If he wants to spend the night with me and it's not my turn, I'll tell him I don't want to. The husband has to respect whose turn it is, and we do too. Sometimes Furu skips a turn and comes with me. I can't tell him no, because he knows perfectly well who he wants to spend the night with. I'd like both my son and daughter to be like me when they're older. We say, if you want to know what a man is like, go to his mother's house and you'll see what he's like.
Potions and massages help the boy, they make him stronger. And I want him to be stronger than his father. How many wives would I like him to have? As many as he likes. Traditionally, and still today, polygamy has helped to reduce the number of widows or disowned wives. A large family means more mouths to feed, but also more manpower for work. In addition, there is still a firm belief that the young mother should keep her distance from the husband for two years, until the child has stopped breastfeeding. Two years of abstinence, which few men can stand. The Wodabi are polygamists. Each man can marry as many wives as his financial situation permits, that is, the number of cows he owns. But this is not what differentiates them from other polygamous societies. The difference is that it is the women who choose. Yes, that's right. There's only a couple of problems. If she decides to leave, her family will have to return the cows, and the children will continue the father's lineage. They belong to him. For the Wadabi, a beautiful woman must have seven holes in her ears, from which they hang seven heavy earrings to enlarge them. Her cheeks must have been marked by scarification, and her limbs should be long and graceful. According to them, for a man to be attractive, he must have a broad forehead, a large nose, white teeth and eyes, and a nice voice. During the Jarawal festival, the men dance dressed up as women, while the women decide who they will spend the night or the rest of their days with. Until the time of marriage, Wadabe women enjoy complete sexual freedom, which is only restricted from the birth of their first child. After marriage, they lose this freedom, but acquire the right to divorce their husband and return to their mother's camp, or go with another man, without this leading to any rejection from society.
My dream is to get a good husband, a husband who doesn't leave. Men today will go right off with another woman, and when they return, they start with their stories, this, that, and the other thing. I want a good man, a serious and responsible man. I'll be his wife from top to bottom. Fatou Mendy is 21 years old and is already one of the favorites to win this year's edition of the beauty contest known in Senegal as Miss Yongama. <laughs> This contest, which is repeated in several West African countries, prizes the concept of African beauty. A plump woman with a rounded but harmonious figure. They also have to be single women. The Miss Yungamas represent the traditional concept of an African wife. And this contest is the shortest route to getting a good husband. Yongama is a set of values. People should not be mistaken. It doesn't mean stout figures. It doesn't mean being deformed. No, that has nothing to do with it. Yongama is the feminine ideal for us Africans. It is harmonious woman with a beautiful figure. Yongama is an adult woman who has the whole ensemble. First her way of walking, her radiant smile, the way she holds her head, her clothes, her bearing. It's got nothing to do with young girls. No, no. A young gama has a way of dressing. She has a way of being and a set of perfumes and accessories which she normally wears. The annual Miss Yongama contest is a great social event attended by the creme de la creme of Senegalese society. It is one of the best occasions to see and be seen. Before the final contest, the organizers seek out contestants for Miss Yongama from all over the country. Thirty of them participate in the qualifying rounds prior to the final contest. Fatu is one of the chosen ones. The philosophy of Yongama is our culture, our tradition. If you talk to any Senegalese person about Miss Yongama, there's an immediate reaction. They know what you're talking about. The same can't be said for Miss Senegal. It doesn't reach them. It's not culture. It doesn't represent the values of our women. This, this is what's ours. Fatu works Monday to Saturday as a cleaning lady in the house of a European diplomat in Dakar. If I have a good husband who can keep me, I won't have to work and I don't want to go out to work. I have to keep my children, my family and my friends. Only if I can't keep them all, and I don't have the money to be with my friends, then I'll go to work. The first Sunday of each month, 
she and a group of her closest friends get together to draw lots for money which has been provided by the women themselves. Every month, each of the women contributes 8 euros and various household products. The winner receives a considerable lump sum. When one woman wins the prize, she can't win again until all the others have done so. Each month, they also leave a small amount to cover unexpected events, such as accident or illness. In a region where people live from hand to mouth and saving is a utopian concept, these groups of women act as real family banks. But the meetings are not only financial in nature, they are above all a social occasion, the perfect excuse to get together. Each month they're held at a different woman's house, and she is obliged to provide food and drink for all the others. At the end, they sing and dance. They are happy because Fatu is a favorite to be crowned Miss Yongama in the final to be held the following weekend. Many African women treat their skin with chemical products to try to lighten it. The majority of these products are both strong and dangerous. The problem of skin lightening is not a real problem. If we look at the percentage of women who do it, it's very low. This doesn't come from Africa. The products sold to these women are always products made in Europe or in the United States for them. So I'll turn the question around. How long will we continue to be the world's trash heap? However, there are women who don't worry about keeping their natural skin color. Women like Miriam Diallo, who try to break the bonds of tradition. I won't accept marriage to someone who makes me stay at home. I categorically refuse because I want to be of use. I want to move. I can't sit still in one place. It's impossible. When I'm still, I go crazy. I can't stand it. Woman is the accompaniment to man. Women's liberation is not only about going out to work. Women's liberation is a cliché from the 1970s. We have to move on. I have songs like Tell Me, which talks about abused women. I ask men why they do these things. They have to respect a woman like they respect a mother. There are also forced marriages. There are people who come from abroad or very rich cousins and the parents give you in marriage without your consent. It does a lot of damage to not love someone and marry him. And we also have polygamy. I'm against polygamy. I can't stand to have a husband and share him. It's impossible. The African woman is a very vain woman, one who spends a lot of time on her personal appearance. Small cosmetics boutiques are all over the cities, and women visit them frequently. Men are like children. When they get home, you have to have dinner ready for them. You have to be dressed up and play with them. You also have to excite them. A good perfume, that's what a woman knows. That's what she puts on at night. This necklace is the Yalyeli. It's what keeps men. If you don't want your husband to go off looking for another woman, you put this on at night and some underwear like this. You see? This is what you put on. And men like this to be given pleasure. And if you don't give them pleasure, they'll go off with another woman. The day before the big final, Fatu and the other Miss Yongama contestants go to the house of Mr. Ndiaye for a wardrobe fitting. 
Ndiaye is one of the most famous fashion designers in West Africa. His designs combine simplicity and colorfulness. From his workshop emerge most of the designs worn by high society Senegalese women for the traditional festivals. Senegalese women really like to dress well. They change every day. If they wear a boo boo today, they can't wear the same thing the next day. They like men to say sweet things. They like dresses and they like pretty hairstyles. Today, our young people like to wear short clothing. But our tradition is to wear wide, proper clothing. A young Gama woman must be proper. A young Gama woman must know what clothing is. A young Gama woman must speak softly, must walk slowly. What can these women have as pleasure in life? We offer them the opportunity to feel beautiful, to know that they are rejected by society, that they are an important element of it. I'm very proud to be a woman of my language, to be Senegalese. It doesn't matter if I win tonight, because I enjoy the catwalk. I like feeling like a queen. Ah, 
uyakelezi mfolozi ha iya popo mi popo ma igutando mama tegi zilati stelo tando namazinyo utoto hamba juwalam hamba stando sam 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 ha uyakelezi mfolozi ha iya popo mi popo ma igutando mama tegi